Welcome to the Quick Stop F1 podcast. My name is Tasha, and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. Welcome back, everybody, from break. I hope you all had a very refreshing, relaxing break because all hell has broken loose since we've returned. (laughs) We've had some crazy allegations being flung. We uh, had some very interesting sessions to get into. Um, But before we get into all of that, I just want to say hey to Paris, who is joining me on the show. Welcome, welcome. (laughs) How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm good. Um, What's this, like my second time joining you guys within the last two months? (laughs) It's amazing. So welcome back, back by popular demand. Yes, yes. And you're going to be joining us for actually a few shows this season. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited for that. Um, I mean, I guess we can just jump right in because a lot happened just even from the, the minute they touched down in Texas, yeah. there was some drama. Um, what were kind of your like thoughts so far um, of the weekend? I mean, you know, Formula One always keeps you on your toes. I will say that. Um, I was thinking about this the other day, how every time there is a bit of off track drama and it's specifically to do with the cars or, um, some sort of technical directive is brought in. I think I just love it because it's an opportunity for all those people who have no idea what they're talking about to start talking about a subject Mm -hmm. that they're like, this is absolutely (laughs) what's happening. And you're just like, you never heard of that thing before last week. Right. Um, so I think now I'm passionate about bib height, right? um, adjusters. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, I am learning a lot this week and I'm not sure how much of it is legitimate, but I'm looking forward to that discussion. Right. And yeah, this was the first sprint race that I think I've enjoyed in a very long time. Um, yeah, I would agree with and that. And then qualifying made me want to, uh, yeah, just <laughs> lie down somewhere for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt too. And like the times are off, even like for us here in the States, because, you know, it was like evening for us. I know it's midnight, past midnight for you, but I just feel like this combobulated now because I'm like, it's dark. I want to just go to bed. (laughs) So, (laughs) um, I mean, I guess we can kind of start with like the sprint. Like you said, it was actually really entertaining uh, and kind of like a chaotic sort of way there was a lot going on and um I think a lot more than what I was initially anticipating but it seems like a lot of the teams hit the ground running and nothing was really that straightforward um did you have a moment from the sprint where you were kind of like excited about or you know that jumped out at you I think there was there was actually so many and that's what made it yeah really entertaining (laughs) um particularly like I really just loved signs like Carlos going in there and oh being God. like yeah gloves are off now there's six <laughs> races left I'm not right I'm not driving for Ferrari after this so yeah I'm gonna make the most of the next ungovernable. Bit. yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's not listening to the radios he's making his own strategies yeah, yeah. I'm here for that yeah <laughs> that was that was the highlight I was just thinking boy Leclerc is gonna have yeah. a really tough time these next few races and the, absolutely the thing is you know they're not particularly in in the world championship contention so there's no harm there's mm-hmm. no real harm maybe right. if they both crash out like it could do a bit of damage to the, the constructors championship but yeah. you know I think I genuinely think that there's a, a playful loving camaraderie there now and I hope that it just stays respectful, but it's entertaining yeah. as hell. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt too. I was like, okay, Carlos, cause normally he doesn't, I wouldn't say like move me, you know? Um, but I do really love the fact that, yeah, he's definitely leaving and he's not, he's not holding back on his way out. And it's just the fact that like, you know, Charles is trying to be so like, you know, Hey, let's just, let's go after George. And Carlos is like, nah, F that. <laughs> And then later on in the race, he gets, um, he overtakes Lando who, you know, locked up, man. I just was like, yeah, Carlos is having a a really good weekend. And I think Ferrari, the car looks really good. They were the only team that didn't bring any upgrades. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was kind of fun. Everybody else, you know, the major four teams, um, besides, besides them, um, brought, you know, a bunch of upgrades and their sheet was completely empty. And everybody was like, okay, but it seems like their car has just been the most, ready to go. So out of everybody. So that's been really nice to see like that. Yeah. The Ferrari is performing really well and they really haven't had to tinker with their car too much. So that's good. Yeah. What do you think about yeah. Lando this weekend? Mm, not off to a great start. I just feel like the start of the sprint 
definitely, I feel like he did a much better job of, you know, uh, making up two places and he was pretty much staying, um, he was out of DRS range, but you know, he was staying pretty close by Mm -hmm. Max. And so I thought, you know, for somebody who you, he needs to win these sprints, I think coming P2 at the very least, you know, is good enough. Um, but then, yeah, I guess the tires fell off toward the end and he just made a, a couple of lockups and that was that. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure coming on, you yeah. know, obviously we talk about this all the time, like so there's a lot of pressure on him. Um, and so and he puts a lot of pressure on himself, I think, as well. Yeah. But then he, yeah. on the flip side, as soon as it doesn't work out, for example, in the post ra- post sprint race chat, he was saying, you know, well, I'm happy with fourth. And I'm like, right. if you are trying to get this world championship, you right. cannot be happy with fourth. Like, you, um, sorry, Absolutely. third. You cannot be happy with third. Yeah. Like, that is, okay, you're still on the podium, but that's that's a wild statement. You should not be saying enough. that. That is yeah. not enough. Yeah. And especially the fact that you could have been, you know, at least second, if not, you know, if you battled with a staff and you maybe could have won. Right. Verstappen took it away and he, he did a, an amazing job. I'm not saying that, but I don't know. Yeah. He was in more gumption. Like Piastri, as, as rubbish as he did, like he was way back in the, yeah. the nether regions and he was like, no, I'm right. going to fight. I'm going to try and get forward. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. And then the way he yeah. just dropped off his tires, I understand that for everybody, the tire situation was different from quali. Um, mm-hmm. the track was much hotter than they anticipated it was yeah. going to be. And that meant that the degradation was like way faster on, for, for right. pretty much all the cars except Max. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, I completely understand, you know, why, how he ended up in the position he ended up in, but Sainz and Leclerc had been fighting for like seven laps straight going from the get go corner to corner. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they were not nice on their tires, you know, and yeah. for him to just fall off so quickly and so easily at the end and just miss out yeah. on the penultimate lap was crazy to me. Crazy. And Charles, uh, yeah, Charles almost got him as well. So it was just like, it might've been fourth at some point. Yeah. And I agree. Like, I mean, yeah, the, the narrative coming into this is, you know, Lando needs to win essentially he needed to win all the remaining sprint races, all the remaining Grand Prix and get all the fastest lap points. And he already missed the one mark last weekend or last race that we were at when, uh, Ricardo got the fastest lap point. Um, now he's gotten P3 in the, you know, one of three sprint races that we have and Godspeed for tomorrow. We don't know, but I just feel like he's just not in that headspace that he's really going to fight for Mm it. Um, or if he does, it's very like intermittent. Like sometimes I feel like, we're seeing a different side of Lando, like at the start of the race. Um, and then that very same 19 laps later, you see, you know, same old, same old. So yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a nervous for him. I mean, he has uh, technically redeemed himself today in, um, in quality in the evening, but yeah, I mean, we can talk about that in a bit. Uh, another yeah. thing that I found really interesting is this weekend feels like a make or break weekend for Yuki. I don't know if you're getting yeah. that feeling. Yeah, I absolutely am. Um, I mean, coming into it, I was just seeing an article that came up about Honda Mm -hmm. kind of lobbying Red Bull to finally get Yuki at the very least, like a test, you know, to, for the Red Bull seat. Um, Which is, by the way, is insane if they have not tested him against Max. Like that, they have been doing that for Daniel. It is wide, wide knowledge that they've been getting you know, Daniel into that car to check if he's like how close he is to Perez and how far away he is from Max. So if they haven't offered Yuki the same grace, that is insane. It's bizarre. It's, I mean, at the very least, it's like extremely, extremely bizarre that he's not in the conversation that he hasn't been, you know, tested against Max. Like, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. Even if they have no intention, I feel like of ever putting him in that seat, it's just the fact of like the optics of it. It just looks very strange because he's, the benchmark for your other drivers to come in and try to surpass, you know, his performances. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you're saying he's not good enough himself to at least be tested. So exactly. yeah, I don't like that. I don't think that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, to your question. Yeah. I do feel like it kind of, he, I mean, he had a great sprint race. Um, 
you know, he was fighting against Oscar Piastri at some point and Checo at some point, um, made like a couple of errors here and there, but like at the, I felt like he had really good energy. Like he really was prepared to fight, um, as much as the V carp would allow him to. And, um, yeah, I think he's definitely proving that, I don't know, like he's just not somebody who's, you can just take down that easily. So, um, Liam, he beat him in sprint quality. He beat him in the sprint race. Um, and yeah, I think he's off to a good start in terms of that, but I just feel like, yeah, he definitely has that energy of like, I'm going to at least fight for it. And I do think that now maybe Honda's getting involved. I think maybe even, uh, he'll improve his, his level even more. So what about you? I, I agree. I, I totally agree. I think he has realized that if he cannot prove, um, that he has what it takes, to drive the Red Bull car, not just the Alpha Tauri, right. his time in F1 will come to an end. And as much as I think for a few years, he's just been that kind of guy who's like, I just, I'm just happy to be here and I just want to like enjoy right. the ride. And I don't really give a toss like what, what comes of it. I don't even want to exercise sometimes unless you make me kind of thing. Right. And- <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> he said it ruins his day. <laughs> I I fully hear that. I fully hear that. But I think um, the the penny's kind of dropping and he's realized that he's like, wait, hold on a second. Why can't I have it all? Why can't I have a bit more? Yeah. You know, I am as good and and maybe I do have a few things to improve on, but I can do that. And I would love to see him do it. Yeah, I agree. I I mean, yeah, it's just been a few years. And I mean, if he doesn't stay with Red Bull, I would love to see him somewhere else. I don't know where that would be. Obviously, at the moment, it looks like all the seats are being taken. Um, And you've got like Franco Colapinto coming in. And now everybody's like, well, where can we put him at? Mm -hmm. And that last Sauber seat's uh, very interesting. They're like, you know, uh, Botas might get it. Um, Franco's now in consideration for it. Like, there's just like too many names and not enough seats. Um, so yeah, I definitely think it's going to be a lot harder for, you know, Yuki to stay in the sport, which is kind of unfortunate because I do feel like he has a lot more to show. Yeah. Uh, and he has made great improvements, but you know, obviously being in a team like Red Bull, so cutthroat, like it's just, I think it's hard to shine. I agree. Um, you have to have yeah, I just a feel certain like, charm yeah. that works on them. Like we yeah. all love Yuki. I think we can all understand him and empathize with him. Like, like you were saying yeah. where he's like, you know, exercising ruins my day. I think most people can relate <laughs> to that. And I think we all get it and we get him yeah. as a team. Red Bull are always on a weird vibe anyway. Um, Absolutely. Like, yeah, everything that's happened in the last week around Red Bull tells me that they're constantly mm-hmm. on a weird vibe and no one knows, no one knows if they can trust them or not. So Absolutely. if Yuki doesn't yeah. end up in F1, I just don't feel like it's his fault. Yeah. Yeah, it's just hard because, yeah, like not enough seats. And unfortunately, it might not go his way just based off of the timing of things. I feel like if we were having this conversation like last year, Mm -hmm. I feel like this driver season might have looked a bit different. He might have gone somewhere else. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, also, he seems like he wants to be part of it, which is the other thing. Like for as much as I want him to move on and get out of that environment, like he seems to just have nothing but love and respect for being part of that environment. So, you know, at the same time, you kind of get what you get, you know, with that type, you know what you're going, getting into with teams like that. So I guess you kind of also get what you get if it doesn't work out, you know? So, Mm -hmm. um, what about Haas? They kind of surprised me this weekend. And actually, I mean, honestly, the whole season, to be quite honest, uh, from the moment that IO, um, you know, came in as team principal, like on, you know, on, on whim, the fact that, you know, they've scored, so many points this season, so many double points Mm -hmm. this season. Um, I think Toyota is a partnership that might be kind of in the pipeline for them. So it looks like they're like growing and expanding, but like on track, they absolutely are competitive. They um, just over took uh, V-Carb actually for the constructor. So they're moving up in the world. They have typically been dead last uh, or, you know, right around there. So they're definitely uh, on an upward trajectory, but yeah, Kevin Magnuson and Nico Hulkenberg did a great job today in the sprint. Mm-hmm. Um, any thoughts on their performance or on Haas in general? Um, I think so. Uh, having them at like seventh and eighth, I think they were running at one point. And mm-hmm. I was kind of just shocked to see their names there. 
more than anything. Yeah. I was just like, whoa, okay, <laughs> you guys are really doing this. Um, right. I don't know too much about the upgrades that they've bought. I, I genuinely have not paid attention yeah. to their technical development, and that's my bad. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they are up there and they're in the top 10 or just outside of the top 10, um, considering where they were at the beginning of the year, considering yeah. where they probably were like, you know, even three, four months ago. Um, right. I don't know. I'm interested. I think Kolkenberg's obviously like going to be super happy. Um, yeah. You know, Magnuson will be happy to go out on a better note than I think a lot of people maybe thought they right. would have. Um, so it can only benefit the team and it can only benefit us because it means that next year there'll be um, even better, like more competitors on that, the mid, mid, yeah. uh, middle ground racing. So, yeah. 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 I'm excited for that. Um, it just seems like there's like a lot of good stuff about to happen in the midfield next season. Mm-hmm. And the fact, like you said, that we have another constructor that actually is getting competitive. This, I mean, Haas of all, because, you know, Gene very notoriously is very stingy and doesn't ever want to really financially invest in the team. So, you know, what IO has been able to do with the, the, the shoestring budget that he is mm-hmm. on is actually really impressive. Um, but like you, I mean, I'm keeping like one eye on them. I don't know their full technical development this season, but it definitely just seems like yeah. they are just figuring it out. And I think that that's really cool to see, um, you know, given where they were this time last year and the season before. Um, Did you see that? Moving on up. I think it is Haas. They don't have a simulator. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Like, I don't even know. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, how are you developing a car with like no technology? Like, it just makes no sense. Yeah. It makes no sense. I mean, it's like finding out that Williams was... Uh, I was just thinking the same thing. Keeping track of their stock on Excel. Like, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, y'all really live like this. Okay. <laughs> um, another kind of, speaking of Williams, uh, Alexander Albon mm. is being called to the stage because... Franco has come in and some might say exposed him. Um, do you have thoughts on that? Like I, what are we seeing there in Williams? I feel like Alex has, um, or, and George to be fair, like you have to go back a little bit as well. They've always been against competitors that were just not even supposed to be in Formula One. Let's be honest. Right. Um, <laughs> so now I'm kind of almost glad that there is somebody else to actually truly see, okay, if you've got two drivers right. that can drive, because we know Alex can drive. If you have two drivers that can yeah. drive, how good are Williams? Like if they can push each other, you know, not to disparage Alex, but like if there's someone better than him that can even push them higher than, mm-hmm. than what he's been able to, um, I think that's brilliant for, for Williams. I've always really respected yeah. Williams as a team, as the institution that they are. Um, so I think, Finally, them actually having drivers, <laughs> two drivers that can yeah. drive is great for them. Might not be so great for Alex, like by himself. Yeah. Um, I think he will massively struggle against Carlos next year because Carlos yeah, is amazing. Say. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, he, he knows what he's doing. Uh, I yeah. think Carlos will drive that team. I think Carlos will take the team to, to new heights. And Alex has just got to be careful of his seat. Yeah. I mean, look at Carlos right now in Ferrari. Like, he runs that joint. Like, <laughs> so Williams is probably just light work for him. Yeah, that's going to be a Charles really interesting. Charles is basically the babe in the front yeah. seat, but the only difference is Charles right. can actually drive. <laughs> right. He's just being nice. Like, I'm just, you know, yeah. letting this happen. He's like, I know what this is. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. Yeah, next year I'm really. This year feels like such a gap year. Yeah. Um, like so much has happened. Like I will say, like in terms of the previous season, it has been more interesting and more like up in the air. Like after those first seven races, we just don't know what's going to happen, mm-hmm. and that's been a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, for as like entertaining as it is, it's like everything's like setting up for like next year. Yeah. I completely and I'm agree. Just, like so excited for that. Um, what about Red Bull? And Ooh, Perez, Checo, oh. Checo, Checo. Why, <laughs> dude, man, come on, mm. come on. He was like so far back, and then yeah, he ended eighth in the sprint, or excuse me, ninth in the sprint. Because he was there was a part, there was a, a moment when he was like fighting with Yuki, and Yuki overtook him, and like, yes, yeah. he overtook Yuki back. But I'm like, why are you back there fighting with your B team? Yuki, yeah, what? 
it's crazy. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. And it's like, yeah, you, when you see Checo and, and Yuki going at it, I mean, obviously it brings up next year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Checo has said that he 100% plans to be in that seat next year. We'll see. I don't know. I just feel like the energy from V Carp is very hungry. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Liam's coming in with you know, something to prove. Yuki has something to prove. I just feel from that standpoint, is your junior team meant to fill that second seat at the Red Bull, at Red Bull? Like it's time yeah. to move somebody up and it's time for Checo to go. So yeah, he shouldn't be so confident that hundred no. percent he's going to be there. I, I just um, don't understand. Where some bodies are buried. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't understand why he gets so much rope because, yeah. and, and I say this as a massive Checo fan, like personally, yeah. I think, I've always really admired what he's done for himself in F1 because he didn't have the best car for years and years and years. And Absolutely. You know, his, his sponsorships really helped the team when he was in like Force India, literally giving them money um, just through mm-hmm. his presence being there. However, and, and what he had to go through at McLaren, but I, I can't justify him staying in that Red Bull seat. Yeah. I don't understand how Horner just like, knowing how cutthroat Horner normally is and how cutthroat um, the whole Red Bull team can be with everything we've seen. I just don't understand why he's still right. there. Yeah. That's what I just can never figure it out either. Cause I'm like, I can't follow the logic. You know, mm-hmm. we've seen people get six races <laughs> and they're out. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I can't follow the logic. The, you know what I'm the saying? Amount they love Daniel Ricardo and Daniel Ricardo is out mid season. Listen, they got rid of it. They were like, listen, I love you, but you got to go. And so, yeah, when, and then, you know, you see allegations start flying and it's like, oh, right, well, maybe, you know, some people know some things. I don't know. But it's just, it's just, it's just very, to me, it's just very strange that they keep him around and that he 100% for sure knows that he's never going anywhere. So I do, I do really like, that makes my antenna go up a lot because I'm like, this doesn't follow the logic to anything else happening in the Red Bull universe. Yeah. So, but what do you what yeah. do you think is happening in the Red Bull universe? Like, let's let's gossip for a second. What what do you think, think is going on with that I, ride height thing? Honestly, for me, like, okay, so the one thing I learned is that everybody on the grid has that same device. The difference with Red Bull is that theirs is accessible from the cockpit, like, or I guess near the pedals. Um, they're saying that, you know, obviously the drivers can't, or no one, it's, it's inaccessible once the car is built. But I just don't think I believe that in terms of like it being just this device that we have just in case we need to use it. And, but it's not accessible once the car in the weekend gets, gets started. Like these cars, you know, the weight of these cars is so precise. Like, I just don't see the reasoning behind a team having something extra on their car Mm -hmm. that they wouldn't be able to access. Then you get into the FIA doing their inspections and then saying things like, yeah, well, we don't have, we don't have any CCTV footage of, um, you know, the the park fair may, you know, conditions like changing Mm -hmm. the, the teams in park fair may changing their car. So I'm like, that's, weird like why wouldn't you have footage of that like we notoriously know the FAA doesn't have enough people to just stand there and wait for these cars so it's like yeah you would have to use footage and so the fact that there is none um and just like a whole for me I'm just like I don't buy it in the same way I didn't buy that they weren't the ones who were doing the asymmetric you know Mm breaking like it's just every time there's some gray area loophole innovation quote unquote um it's always them so i I don't think i'm surprised by it but i'm just like i think there's a lot going on the thing the thing that i (laughs) disagree with fundamentally is the word innovation when used um in this aspect simply because the part of the discussion is not around Mm -hmm. whether or not the device should exist or not as you said, it exists right. on everyone's cars. What the discussion is around is when they use this this device. Like what what yeah. uh, what time during the race weekend that they're accessing it, and for right. anyone to suspect that they would be using it during Park Femi, like why was that the original kind of thought process? Yes. Why why right. was that link drawn? Because if, if everyone has this position part on their car, why wouldn't you say mm-hmm. that to everybody? Like, you're not allowed to touch that during Park Fermi. But right. why is that now a specific 
like thought process, a specific specific thread that is being drawn. And I think that's when it goes from being an innovation, which to me would be like, okay, well, everybody has the same part, but we've made the part slightly different and it means that it runs better or it it works in a different way. It they are using or whoever may be using the allegedly using it. Allegedly allegedly (laughs) using this part. Right. They'd be using it under conditions where it is categorically not allowed to be used. Therefore, it's not right. an innovation. You are cheating. And just cheating, that's yeah. just basic. I feel like that's a very basic thing. So yeah. I don't know. I, I also feel like they get a lot of leeway because then if I will say, well, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, we can't prove it or we can't see it. So we're just going to write a technical directive to, to ensure that we've said that right. you can't do that. And it's like, well, no one can do that. Park Femi already says that you're not allowed to, to you're only allowed to change right. specific things. And that right. is not one of the things that you're allowed to change. So why, why yeah. are you giving them this kind of rope? And especially if we've identified that it is Red Bull that's doing it. I, I just think it's right. really, really wrong. It's yeah. I mean, and they're the only team that's had to like put a seal on it, mm. you know, like they're having to change their car. They're having to do all these different things to comply. So it's like, yeah, for me, yeah, to your point, it's just cheating. I mean, Zach Brown calls it out. Um, I think Fred Vasseur has called it out just in terms of like, we need to investigate more. Yeah. Like we can't just be like open and shut. I would put a seal on it. So that's the end of the story because a lot of, you know, the media, a lot of, um, you know, people have been basically like, oh, it's it's a non-issue. Mm-hmm. And like, it is an issue because nobody else has that on their car. Yeah. And it it's very strange that you just brush that off. I mean, we're in a tight battle, right? Mm -hmm. For championships. I mean, a lot of money on the line. So it's like, why would you at least not do your due diligence? Like now you're telling me that there's no CCTV footage. Like that's insane. Like that should be the standard for any of the teams and all of the teams. Like you need to have some sort of like proof that people aren't breaking park family. Cause now how do, how do we know other teams aren't changing stuff? How would you know? I, I completely so now agree. you're selling on yourselves. <laughs> I mean, in the F, like, cause it's so funny. Like the week before we came back, I think Ben Suleim did an interview and he was sitting uh, here complaining. He's like, the FIA doesn't get enough credit. And I'm like, okay. And every time you guys have an opportunity to be transparent and do things fairly, you don't take that. Yeah. Like, so what are we giving you credit for? And this is like a prime example of that. Like, regardless of where you fall in terms of like, if it's, you know, uh, cheating or not cheating or whatever. It's like, can we all just agree that like, we do need more transparency and fairness in a sport, especially between Mm -hmm. teams that are so close together in competition this season. Like it's just like the bare minimum of their job. So I think to let people just off the hook the same weekend that you discover the part exists is like absolutely insane to me. Exactly. And and they do this. I think, you know, FIA also notorious at being very arbitrary with how they approach um, enforcement yeah. of their own rules and their own technical di- directives like some things yeah you can have a very very tiny um fraction of error or margin of error and it's like no no no, you're disqualified that's too much within yeah. this really really ridiculous tiny amount and then other things yeah. it's like well you've got six months to change that <laughs> and it can be next season and it doesn't really, right. really matter but i'll slap you on the wrist if we catch you doing it like come on right. it can't be both I mean, that's, yeah, it's just, I think that's kind of what it is. It's like so hard to reconcile those two things. You see them at the same time happening. It's like, yeah, the extreme like clamp down on certain, like we had more fuss over Lewis Hamilton's nose rings and Sebastian Vettel's underwear underwear than we did over a potential team cheating. And then you have two principal, two team principals who are basically saying like, we, can we just please look more into this? And the FIA is saying, like, no, everything's fine. We checked it out. Mm. It's like, how would you know? Yeah. But how would you know? Yeah. We'll see. I, I, I don't know <laughs> what will happen with that. I, I think that's the last we're going to hear of it, to be honest. I don't think there will be any yeah. more explorations. Yeah. It will just be like a, um, how do you say, one of those stories, a fable. Like, Red Bull right. may have cheated <laughs> that one time, but we don't ever really Red know. Red Bull lore, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, well, that being said, um, the Red Bull did look great this weekend. Um, it did look back to its typical form. (laughs) So, I mean, the seal, obviously that was on the car. I mean, the ride height situation maybe didn't 
hurt them, let's mm-hmm. say, um, at CODA so far this weekend. And I guess we should move into quality yeah. and just talk a little bit about some of the standout moments. There was a couple for me. I don't know about you. What are you, what are your thoughts? Uh, <laughs> let's, start, start, let's start off with some good stuff. Um, yeah. Then, rather, yeah. Rather than... Keep the vibe higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What can I say? I think Magnuson mm. ended up in Q3 for the first time uh, this yeah. season. So going back to what we were just saying about the Haas and how they are ever moving forward, um, shockingly. But yeah, yeah, I think that was you know that was good for him. Signs again had mm-hmm. an amazing qualifying. Um, yeah, and then both Mercedes just seem to be terrible. I don't know. Yeah, the car was horrific all weekend. Yeah, and this is we had six upgrades coming in. Um, who knows if they worked or not? To be quite honest, um, because obviously the temperature is one of the, our biggest uh, ops, and so obviously coming to Austin, one of the hottest tracks, mm. it just did not bode well. The car did not look good in. Um, quali sprint quali the sprint race this quali it just yeah. just looks like a mess yeah, it was, so. it, i think it was good for a second in sprint quali because like russell came oh yeah like lewis was on track yeah. for pole yeah yeah, right. russell, yeah russell came second so mm-hmm. so there was a moment where it was like yeah it's gonna be a good yeah. weekend right. <laughs> it really wasn't and then it wasn't yes yeah. yeah, not to be yeah um Speaking of people who weren't supposed to be where they supposed to be, though, Pierre Gasly has definitely shocked me also up there with Kevin Magnussen. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just like, you know, because that Alpine has been a, a handful all year as well. And it's funny because on Twitter, I was just chatting with a friend and like, um, I was like, I always forget that Aston Martin is there because, you know, we don't really see them a lot this season. Yeah. And uh, she was like, yeah, that's me with Sauber and Alpine. And I was like, yeah, whenever they, they go to like a, a Gasly like on board, I'm like, oh, yeah. is that? <laughs> for like a split second, because I'm like, we just never really see them. Nope. Uh, so, yeah, it's good for him for having like actually a really good weekend so far. Mm, I agree. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And um, I think it's good for him and the team as well because obviously he's staying and yeah. so yes. um, it's good that he is making movements in the team but for sure i don't know quali was was for me honestly i'm not gonna lie as soon as lewis went out i wanted to switch off the tv and if i, I was, was not recording yeah. with you today i would not have watched <laughs> the rest of quali i'm not no, even gonna we said lie the same thing we said the same thing we're like man if we weren't recording a show later we would just turn this off and go to bed like 100 go eat some dinner that had me spiraling. Um, so what happened for people who didn't catch it was that, you know, sprint race, the both Mercedes just kind of like were not like on pace at all. Like Lewis made one position and George just kind of slid backwards. Um, and so both the cars just did not look great, especially with the Ferraris and the Red Bull and the McLaren. Like they just completely were yeah. off pace. So as usual, um, Lewis decided the garage anyway, decided that they were going to make some adjustments to the car setup. So we get into quality and it was just not great. He was sliding everywhere around those corners. And and, everywhere. Yeah. You know, Lewis is one of those people that's known for just driving really well in, in a sense of, you know, not too, not too much tugging on the steering wheel. You know, you go, he puts the right. car where it's supposed smooth, to be. He's yeah. really smooth. No. Mm-hmm. That thing was slip sliding like it had friggin' fairy liquid <laughs> underneath it. And it was stressing me out just watching it. I was like, why is yeah. there so much oversteer? Why is there so much understeer? Like it literally had both. It, it, I don't even understand yeah. how <laughs> it was stressing me out. And I, I wasn't surprised yeah. at all. Like when, when he, well, should I say, I was surprised he didn't make it into Q2. But I wasn't surprised yeah. that he like was didn't get a good lap time in. Um, it yeah. was just terrible. It was so bad. And yeah, they did. So apparently he had an issue with his front left suspension yesterday, mm-hmm. um, just before the sprint quali, like and during the whole sprint race today. Um, so I think he was dealing with that issue. But apparently it's something really simple, like a ball bearing or something like that. It's, it's an easy component that they exactly understand. If you fix it, it's, it's not a stressful thing right. to fix. So that apparently should have had absolutely no impact on his drive. It is just 
the general cost out of whatever else they've changed. Yeah. Um, yeah. That wasn't great. And I think that was shown also in George's um, position later in the in the quality. So yeah. even though he made it to Q3, he was also complaining that he couldn't put the car where he wanted it to right. and therefore could not extract the um, pace that he won, wanted to extract. So he ended up P6. Yeah. And yeah, I think just overall the Mercedes is just not responding well this weekend at all. Mm-mm. Yeah, it was definitely really interesting. I mean, like both of them, George, you could hear... Um, on the radio, like after his laps, he would always give feedback like, yeah, that was, that was tough or that was like weird or like, you know, they've both been giving a lot of feedback about the car, just not handling like what they're expecting it to be like. So yeah. But then to see them both, I mean, you know, Lewis is starting P18. He thinks potentially they'll just start from the pit. Maybe they'll change the setup again or who knows. Um, but he's thinking maybe just start from the pit and call it a day. And then of course, George Russell had a uh, crash. Yeah. in the last like couple of minutes of quality. So he, um, basically red flagged it for everybody after that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just wasn't, didn't look good. And, the, and I mean, obviously then the other thing is like the timing, they both went out on for their first, you know, uh, fast lap on like use softs. Mm-hmm. And then the team waited until like the last, like, two, three minutes to send them back out. George was able to get like P3. Um, Lewis was like P16 and had no more time to do another lap. And so it's just like the timing was bad, Mm -hmm. um, which I feel like they kind of were overcompensating for their timing in sprint quality where they sent them out like too early. Um, And then, yeah, so I just, I don't feel like they can get it right this weekend. And it's it's just, it's so frustrating. Definitely. It's so frustrating. I mean, I just, the only thing I thought was like, I can't wait for next year. I, I just was ready to write off the weekend. And, you know, that's unfortunate yeah. because Kota is generally like a pretty decent race. Um, yeah. So, it, yeah, it made me not really want to watch it. Um, however, then Norris ended up like benefiting. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he benefited, to be fair. I, I think Max was on a great lap. But there was, mm-hmm. it wasn't a hundred percent certain if he was going to right. beat out Norris for pole. Same with Signs. Signs was also on a great lap, um, and yeah. he also was in contention for pole. So, um, yeah, Russell crashing out caused both of them to have to abort their laps, and then Norris ended up yeah. getting pole. Um, Piastri did quite well. I think he came fifth. Mm-hmm. Generally, I, I don't know. It's, it's, the end of the year is warming up, but like you said, it does yeah. just feel like this weird filler year. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Uh, I, and it's weird. Like I go back and forth with the news, Lewis to Ferrari news, because I'm like, on the one hand, it's so nice having something so wonderful to look forward to. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, it's like, I know it's coming. So I'm like extremely impatient. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what I mean? Like your parents put your bike under the Christmas tree, you know, on Christmas Eve or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's there. <laughs> you can't ride it. So yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just like one of those things. I'm like, I really do look forward to 2025 mm-hmm. and I'm trying to find moments in 2024 to like enjoy. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like, you know, you got to kind of stay in the moment and there's a lot to observe and see, but like, yeah, the big stuff I care about, like Lewis's performances and situation with the team like for me i'm just like i just find it so ungratifying yeah and that's for me kind of what's been hard because it's been all season it's just been like just like walking through like mud Mm. basically i just feel like it's these six races cannot end soon enough (laughs) like i just want to be done with the season so bad um yeah but yeah you're right Uh, i feel like quali yeah there was like some so I think that was like the biggest thing for me was just seeing like Mercedes performance, um, both, like I said, the team, the strategy, the thought process behind sending them out at those times, mm-hmm. like, you know, interesting, um, seeing the Red Bulls kind of performing, be- well, Max's Red Bull performing better. Um, cause I just was kind of curious, like what we were going to see, you know, before the break, the Red Bull just did not look good. Mm-hmm. And obviously everybody on the team was like, we're going to make some upgrades and we're going to get things right. So it does look like there's going to be a bit of competitiveness between Lando and Max. Um, to what degree? I guess that will be up to Lando, but, you know, it's kind of been <laughs> the vibe all season. It's up to Lando. <laughs> Boy. 
Lando, Lando does a lot. He just lies down and takes a lot. Uh, I want to see <laughs> his gloves coming off. I want to see Lando fight, yeah. fight for this championship. I think he's in his head. Yeah. He's like, I haven't won it anyway. I'll try again next year. Next year, Piastri right. is coming for you, bro. Like, t- it's too late. It's too late. Yeah. I, t- that's not my whole thing. I'm like, this is like the perfect storm of, of situations where I feel like Lando should have been his year. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, like I just, this was like a perfect storm. And so, yeah, I don't think that, I don't think he can do it. And I'm not trying to be like, you know, down or whatever, but I just feel like it's the opportunities, the little miss opportunities. I mean, like, yeah. you know, being P2 all sprint, like it's, it's a sprint race. You know what I mean? Like there really shouldn't be any pressure on it. Cause it's just a sprint race, but you know, still there's just like these mistakes that keep creeping in. And I just am like, it's that type of stuff where I feel like I don't see how you build on that mm-hmm. because I don't think he's confident fully in his ability to do it. So I agree. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's read the starting order for tomorrow mm-hmm. and we go from there. So starting P20 is Joe Guan Yu. Um, I feel like the Salver team should at this point just save the gas, not even do quality. And then like Valtteri and Joe can like rock, paper, scissors <laughs> and see who starts P19, who P20, you know what I mean? Just like, cause why are, what are we doing? Like that is, which pisses me off because then 19, we have Lewis Hamilton. Like, how are you going to talk shit about the salvers? And then Lewis is right, right there. Anomaly, so, yeah. anomaly, anomaly weekend. Right. <laughs> So anyway, so 77, 44 nation rise. Uh, Valtteri is starting P18. <laughs> Where's them circles? Start. Bring back them Twitter like, circles. Right. The Twitter circles, we need it. Right. Uh, heavily, heavily. Uh, P17 is Franco Colapinto. 16, Alex Albon. Uh, P15 is Liam Lawson, except for he has a 60 place grid penalty tomorrow. Six zero? Serving. Six zero, yeah. Oh, He's starting in Mexico. What? He took like a million PU components. And so they were just like, how did I miss this? <laughs> this was a bit of me that I did not see. <laughs> yeah. It's the way I'm like, what is even the point? Like, what does that even mean? Like, you just start back. five like, minutes after you, everybody. Why, like, <laughs> why do you need to speci- specifically specify it's 60? I always crack me up when how they do, do that. Calculate that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he will be starting from wherever he's going to be. Um, Lance Stroll, P14. Again, Aston, I'm just like, I forget that they're there. Like, I was like, wow, reading that and surprised me. Um, <laughs> P13, Esteban Ocon, P12, Nico Hulkenberg, P11, Yuki Sonoda, P10, Sergio Perez. Perez and Sonoda right next now. to each other. Mm, mm, mm. Yep. <sighs> anyway, um. Kevin Magnuson starting P9, P8 is Fernando Alonso, P7, Pierre Gasly, P6 is George Russell. Um, depending on, I guess, how things go with the repairs. We'll see. Uh, Oscar Piastri, P5. P4 is Charles Leclerc. P3 is Carlos Sainz. P2, Max Verstappen. And Lando Norris is starting on pole. Yeah. Um, so normally we do this thing on the show where we read people's tweets. We ask you guys for your race predictions. I was not expecting y'all to like pop off on this tweet because normally when Lewis has a bad quality, everybody's like, I don't care what happens. <laughs> And like, that's it. Um, but a lot of, you had a lot to say. So we're going to pull up the tweet real quick. And so we can um, read some of your guys' thoughts and race predictions for tomorrow. Um, in Paris, if you'd like to go first, you can. Sure. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, Sim3744, uh, 3744 said, by rain... By rain, by fire, by disqualification, or by multiple DNFs, Lewis will be on that podium. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Sam, like, I love her. <laughs> Sam, girl, you know I feel you. I feel you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Brazil 2021, though, girl. I don't oh, know what to say. I, boy, I, I, I wish. I pray. I hope. I agree. If, if that can happen. Yeah. <laughs> I always love okay so the other thing that I get with these tweets is like then everybody's just in Delulu Island yep. so that's like always the, I get either nothing or Delulu so I think that's where we went today we went to Delulu, Delulu I think Lane. everybody did um, yeah we're just all like all daydreaming of better times um, so let me read one that maybe 
<laughs> These were so funny. Um, hold on. Okay. Realistically, oh, this is by at a bid F1 chat. They said, realistically, Max win, Lando P2, Leclerc P3, delusional predictions, Lewis P1, Charles P2, Piastri P3. That's my delusional prediction too, exactly yeah. in that order. Yeah. <laughs> did you want to read another one? Um, I did just see one. Hold on, where did it go? So it says Max Lando signs, and this is from at... Carney Q. Um, and he says, Max Lando signs if Ferrari and McLaren don't mess up on the strategy, maybe Leclerc. So mm -hmm. I think what's really interesting about that is that I don't think Ferrari and McLaren have been bad on strategy recently. I think it literally has right. been just down to like pace or like circumstances on track. So I actually think Max Lando signs is a hundred percent possible. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm going to read one more also. Actually, I'm going to read this one from at Nilly Vanilli F1. Shout out Nilly. Um, she says, he's still the king of Coda. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and I think that she's there this weekend with Crystal. And if I could come back in another life, it would be, I would be coming back as her iPhone. Because they always get shots of Lewis. Like they're always right there yeah. in the mix. Um, Crystal, I think went to the plus 44 event this week as well. Cause if yes. you didn't know, Lewis has just dropped a new line of merch, um, on plus yeah. 44 for Kota. That jacket. Yeah, it's, I actually really like it. I do too, but I'm like trying to be responsible, trying to be a responsible adult for once in my life, but it's not working. I bought something I don't know. We'll last see. time. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like, I bought something a bunch of times and then like the last couple of times the shipping has been weird. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, am I even going to get it? Cause the one shirt I ordered definitely got lost in the postal service system. Oh, so damn. if imagine if I ordered that jacket and it was just, like, yeah, we lost it. No. And they only do limited runs. So yeah, I'd knock everything over. Um, so your race predictions, you're saying, I think, I think, um, Max Lando signs is very yeah. reasonable. Uh, I used to be like, yeah, oh my God, Max and Lando are going to crash out on the first lap and we're going to get like, yeah. it, I, it just doesn't happen. So if, if yeah, it does it happen, does, I'll yeah. be really, really happy. But I've noticed yeah. that, you know, there's a lot less first lap crashes this, this season. Yeah. We've been really good with the crashes. This, I mean, like there's been basically no safety cars in so long. Mm -hmm. It was a VSC like once and it was a Singapore and like, that was it. So I feel like everybody's been doing a pretty good job. K Mag, unfortunately, has learned his lesson, so he won't be bringing the terrorism anymore. Apparently, so yeah, no, we just no have K -Mag to watch. terrorism, no Logan Sargent, yeah. like <laughs> right. <laughs> All the chaos is be a proper country. <laughs> like <yeah. laughs> we used to be a proper country. Um, I'm gonna say for my prediction tomorrow, I'm gonna say Max will win. I think Carlos Sainz is gonna be the dark horse though, because he's on something this weekend, yeah. and I just feel like he's he he senses it. And they're the Ferrari is really good on tire deg, um, and I think yeah, I think he will probably end up P2 or um, maybe even win it. Like let me just say mm -hmm. that'd be random, but I think he might win it. Um, and then I'll, I'll add Lando to the podium as well. So it'll be, let's say, Max, Carlos, and then Lando for my podium nice. tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. Um, anything else from you? No, I think we covered it. No? Yeah. Are you excited for the race tomorrow? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really was. I really, really was. Like, yeah. I... I was kind of enjoying the sprint race and I thought it was really cool. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is going to be a fun weekend. No, right. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming, crying, throwing yeah. up like all weekend. Okay. Um, oh my God. Yeah. I guess I do. I am excited. I feel like I hate being excited for recovery drives, but I am excited to see what Lewis Hamilton can do. Um, pray for his tire strategy. That is not soft uh, from the pit lane. That would be crazy, yeah. but stranger things have happened um <laughs> uh yeah i guess for me that's it as well i just yeah i'm hoping for a somewhat decent race some interesting things to happen i don't, I don't have a i don't have a horse in this race tomorrow so i'm just i guess looking forward to the f1 being back in the car sounds so <laughs> yeah 
I wonder, I do, one, one thing one, I do one. wonder is if George is going to end up starting from the pit lane or something. They said that he, they should yeah. be able to fix his car by tomorrow, but you never know. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering too, because I mean, they definitely said that the sensors went off for like, like over 25G mm-hmm. impact or whatever. And I mean, who knows? These cars are so fragile. So maybe we'll see. He might start from the pit lane also. And then everybody, that's like what? Lewis, George, Liam, <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> oh, the whole group from back there. Everybody, you know, join in. There's, there's room for everybody in the pit lane. Um, <laughs> um, Paris, thank you so much for joining me. I know it's late and you're probably ready to go to bed. So I really appreciate yeah. you stopping by today to join me. Um, thank you to everybody out there who is listening and Thank you. Uh, first of all, big up to everybody because we hit 5K subscribers on YouTube finally. Mm. So thank you all so, so much who has subscribed. And obviously, if you have not, it's not too late. It's free. It's right there. Um, go ahead and give us a subscribe. If you would like to rate our podcast on Apple or Spotify, we definitely appreciate it. Five stars, you know the drill. And if you want to see ad-free content, you can support us through Patreon. Um, again, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I hope the race is somewhat entertaining tomorrow. <sighs> Let us pray uh, for Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> and hope for the best um thank you guys again and no matter what happens in life keep it on the black stuff bye Bye. look mate if you've got this far clearly you like what we do so here's a link to subscribe to the quick sub perform family give that a click and here's another link to some more cool on our channel sorry cool cool stuff 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 and remember no matter what happens keep it on the black stuff Click the stuff. Click the click the links. Click the the link the links. Click the links. There. There there.